All right. It looks like we have started. This is the second now recorded meeting. Uh, this time, our primary topic is going over the branding that we've been working on since, honestly, before the project was approved. Um, it's been something that we iterated on quite a bit. Um, we feel there's a lot of importance to the actual branding of these tools. I think that I probably mentioned this in Telegram, but the shift in how Leap is now a branded part of the ecosystem. And you know, you can, while well, you're in a conversation, specifically mention Leap and say, just you know, using the word, the people within the conversations have a context about what part of the ecosystem that references. Um, for this, we wanted the same type of appeal. We wanted something unique, we wanted something branded, and we wanted something that when you are talking about this collection of tools, that you would be able to recognize it just easily with a word. So we went down this, this was part of the proposal, this branding part, the website, the socials, the documentation, a lot of other components for this fall under this umbrella of branding. It's the messaging, it's the look, the feel, the topography, the colors, kind of everything that encapsulates that. I'm gonna to try to run through this presentation. Uh, if you guys want to save questions towards the end, uh, otherwise feel free to interrupt me if something really needs to come up. Otherwise I will try not to uh, rant for the whole meeting about the slides themselves and try to give some opportunity towards the end to discuss and answer questions and that kind of thing. So, um, and I guess before I start this, we had a lot of people on our team, some of them who are here right now, pretty much everybody was involved in this process on our side to help come up with what this was, what it looked like, what the feel was. So a big thank you to everybody on the gray mass side that was helping with this. So to start, the first thing is we outlined our goals. We went through a workshop and went through a lot of iteration and process to try to figure out exactly what we were trying to do before we came up with any of the words or any of the visuals. So these are the goals that we came up with. We wanted to be able to create a place that where we could convey ideas or like a, not necessarily a place, a place will be one of those things. Um, but we needed some place to start for people specifically coming from the JavaScript context, whether it's server side or browser based. Um, we want the brand itself to be able to do that in its look, its feel, that kind of thing. We want the brand to feel approachable and encouraging. Like a lot of people that are coming into this ecosystem are gonna be learning. They need to be able to be walked through this stuff. Uh, there's a lot more developers that don't know how to use Antelope and these technologies than those who do. So really, this needs to be approachable and kind of fun and just a place that people want to learn more. Obviously, kind of just bled into the next bullet point where we want new developers to feel really welcome when they're working with this. Uh, and then as I kind of started this whole thing off, we really want it to be recognizable within the community. It should be just this, shouldn't be too close to anything else. Doesn't have to be. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter how far off it is, but it needs to be unique. Um, so I guess with these kind of things in mind, uh, what we came up with in terms of a name is wharf. A wharf itself, if we get into the definition, it's a structure so that you can unload and load things, whether it's cargo or passengers. That kind of relates symbolically to what we're doing with the SDKs. Passengers are our users. Cargo is our data. This is a place for you to use a wharf to expand your business, expand your application. It does things for you. Well, the definition that we kind of have at this point is that this is a complete framework of intuitive and reliable developer tools for building web-based apps on Antelope blockchains. This is the design of the logo we've come up with. Um, it is clean. It's kind of got some layers to it. I will dive more into the logo in a couple slides. Dark mode kind of inverts itself. You can see how it, instead of on the dark on the top, it's now dark on the bottom, flips it. 
this slide kind of breaks down the different components and how we got to this look. The first little bubble on the bottom, the layers that kind of represent waves, the actual shape of the W you can kind of see as like an isometric pers perspective of a warp. Um, it is a W, and if you look at it kind of sideways, it's also a three. You kind of have a web three thing going on here. Um, it fits that that narrative of that's what you're building with this. This, as much as I love and hate the term web three, it fits it for those people that are going to embrace that terminology and that direction that the internet is going. Um, and it also, like you, there's many ways that you could see the the waves below it. We've played with some animation with it. Um, we've played with different ways that we can present this maybe in user interfaces. Uh, it scales really well. And yeah, those are, I think, kind of the main points. I'm looking at my notes as well. Yeah, I think I covered it all. So the design direction we went in, the colors, you know, we have this kind of green that's going on on the logo. That's kind of a nod towards code terminals. It is, it's a color probably that a lot of developers are familiar with. Uh, a lot of text editors, terminals, uh, programming stuff has kind of that old school nod back to when screens were black and text was green. It's kind of techy, kind of nerdy, but not in your face in that direction. Um, everything is round, soft, and kind of welcoming with the logo. It has almost an 8-bit feel to it in that like, you could see this is potentially pixels that have been turned on their side and kind of rounded a little bit. Just noticed Johan's comment. Um, I don't know if that's going to show up in the video, so I'm just going to read it. Johan said, for non-English native speakers, Wharf means like a dock where a ship can unload or load and unload, and not the Klingon from Star Trek, which we've had a lot of fun with as well. Um, it's all good. <laughs> I just know that's that might show up as an audio sound in the video, and maybe not something visible. I honestly don't know. These recordings are still new to me. So, um, and then finally, like this is a nod towards everything else we've done. Gray Mass is kind of run with a nautical theme, and with we have Anchor, obviously, which follows the nautical theme. We have a lot of internal tooling that follows that as well. Uh, we have uh, Lighthouse, which is one of our APIs. We have Sextant, which is one of our tools for account creation, and a number of things like that. So we figured this wharfs really are kind of the bridge between nautical and land. If antelope is the land-based animal that we're kind of branding it out to be, this is really the connection to the nautical theme. It is it is that medium between land and sea that you know we're using to do this exchange of data and users and things like that. Um, just again, I'm I'm started riffing and then I go back to my notes. I should really follow along my notes. We have a little bit of the technicals of how this theme is assembled. You can see a various number of different design aspects of it. The colors themselves laid out. Uh, we have the two logos. There's kind of design patterns and examples that we've used. There's an example graphic up here uh, that shows potentially a tagline in use with some of the colors and shapes and themes. You can see a lot like the actual wharf shape, like the geometrics of it, is hinted at in the background a lot of the design. A lot of this stuff is going to be used for websites, socials, documentation, that sort of things. Just so that way it's not super plain. Um, sorry, I'm catching up again on slides. I have just a, like a straight up text file with notes and it does not keep track. Figma for presentation is not working out as, it's very nice for, uh, showing this stuff, but there's nowhere for notes. So I had to manually do that. All of this, by the way, this is just kind of a preview of what the technicals of the implementation of the brand are. 
we will have a PDF with this. This stuff will be on the website. It'll be available for uh, other people to be able to use within projects, like all of this stuff as kind of a brand kit itself. And like, this is how you should use it. This is how you shouldn't use it. This slide kind of just represents a small slice of what that eventually will be. Moving into some more of like the, we're moving now more into some of the messaging that we've come up with for the brand. And some of this messaging is overlaid on some of the design concepts we've had. Um, obviously, this whole presentation is kind of branded beyond the first couple slides as Wharf. And we definitely want there to be social elements and visual elements to all of this. So the tagline that we have come up with so far that kind of nods has a nod towards all of this is that shipping great code starts with a solid platform. It's very true in development in that, you know, you need some place solid to start on in order to build something that's really stable. Uh, Wharfs being a solid platform, literally, that reaches out to your boat, so that way you can unload and load things, kind of symbolically fits into the tagline itself. Uh, we've gone back and forth on whether you're shipping code or shipping apps, and so there's like some wordsmithing still going on with this. Um, but overall, this kind of nod towards, nods, a nod towards wharfs, but not like leaning into it, to it so heavily. Like I know in this call, we're talking a lot about those themes for the brand, but if you just were a developer coming onto the wharf website, you probably wouldn't pick up on that unless you really kind of dove deep into the meaning of it. But if you were somebody that actually did that and you caught that, like there may be a slight amount of um, like appreciation for the attention to detail that's going on. So that's always been, I think, a design philosophy on our side, whether it be Anchor or whether it be Core or now Wharf, is that we want to put great attention to detail into some of these things. So that way, for the people that do catch them, like there's that little bit of resonance that happens and it might excite them a little bit more or get them to learn a little bit more effectively. So in terms of the tagline, this is where we're at right now. Um, it, we came up with kind of a one sentence description. There, you saw one on an early slide. This I think might be a different variation. Uh, words might be slightly in different order, but really trying to explain the goals of this framework in one sentence. So that way it's we're trying to talk to the community about what's happening with this project. We're trying to entice new developers into the ecosystem. You know, if a new developer wants to build some on some antelope based chain and needs to understand uh, what they're looking for, we have messaging like this about it providing an intuitive and reliable set of developers tools that make it easy to build these types of web applications. Um, this statement could probably be turned pretty easily to talk about server-side applications when they're working in a JavaScript context. And we'd be able to obviously address those kinds of, um, I don't even know the right word for this, but those types of audiences appropriately. So. Through our branding workshops, one of the things that we have uh, decided upon was the personality. And what we really need to adopt with this framework is the personality of an engaging teacher. Um, the brand itself should embody the feeling of a good classroom. It's where you're learning. It's where you are coming to find knowledge, where you're coming to seek advice, um, and to empower people to do things and have fun while they're doing it. Um, as this statement kind of said, I know I haven't been reading this exactly as it is just because it's on the screen and I don't need to dictate everything, but, um, the last part is really one of our big goals as well. We want to meet people where they are, regardless of where they are and encourage people to try new things and go further with their applications that might lead into the successes of, uh, whatever it is that they're trying to build, you know, that's, one of the big struggles with uh, trying to teach people about blockchain is just that there's so many things you can do with it that 
people need to kind of almost come in with um, their own vision of a product and then something like Wharf needs to be there to teach them how to put the pieces together to see that vision through. So as an engaging teacher, wrapping the personality of the brand in that, we think that we'll be able to deliver on that and help ultimately lead to the successful creation of applications within the ecosystem, which is arguably one of the most important things that needs to happen in any Antelope-based blockchain. We have the platform and then we have everything built upon the platform. Platform being Leap and variations of that potentially in the future. Um, who the brand is going to speak to, we kind of touched on this earlier, but we need to address from top to bottom. We need developers who are going to be new to blockchain. We need developers who are going to be new to Antelope, but maybe experienced with other blockchains and be able to convey the um, the same concepts they may know from another ecosystem into our ecosystem. And then we also need the brand to speak to arguably those of us that are here right now, the experienced developers, the people who have been in the weeds for years on this technology. Um, the brand needs to be able to address all of them kind of equally, excite them all equally, be able to share that kind of knowledge and um, follow along in that kind of classroom vibe. You know, this is, a project like this is really all about empowerment and education. It's not specifically like, there's no one specific thing. It's such a broad topic. Uh, our key messaging that we have come up with for the branding itself is that this is gonna be simple and intuitive. Um, it takes care of all the complexities for you while you're building on Antelope. That message is going to be delivered across things like performing transactions, covering resource costs. Uh, it's all the things that you see people come into places like Telegram and say, hey, I've run into this roadblock. You know, users are coming to me and they're saying, this is too hard to use, uh, being their application, you know. We need to make sure that every all of those roadblocks that most users have in applications are, the common ones at least, are covered within this framework and that it is simple and it is easy for the developer to do rather than kind of what we have today in that we give you the framework to be able to log in and perform transactions, but beyond that, like you're on your own. Um, this kind of leads into the next design point where it's a user first design. We want the UI that comes prepackaged with Wharf to be extendable. So that way you can customize it if you want. But we also need um, a pre built user interface that the users are going to love and they're going to understand. It will be in the languages that they understand. Like everything that happens on the user interface front needs to be user first like we need to take care of those users so that way the applications are successful so that way the ecosystem is successful so user first design in all of this we want it to be flexible and modular uh the first meeting we had on meeting number one where we talked about the various kits and how some of them are standalone uh they can be used independently that is a nod towards the flexible and modular approaches that wharf is taking there are many components that you can use and many components that you could arguably take out and replace with something of your own. The whole system needs to uh, be flexible enough so that way application developers as they are building can, you know, actually make it fit their needs without having to reinvent the wheel. I think reinventing the wheel is probably one of the biggest problems we have right now. So going flexible and modular is going to be a key message of all of this and making sure that we make developers realize that they are empowered to do that sort of thing. Um, and then another key message we want to deliver is, is that this is all going to be built by the experienced developers in this community, whether it is the core of Wharf, which our team is doing right now, and we will invite other people to contribute, whether it's feedback or whatever. Um, but conveying that message in that this is going to be built upon all of the years of experiences that the community has had and collated into one place um, will help, you know, new developers that are coming into the ecosystem understand that like, okay, 
this is being built upon best practices. Maybe I guess that's an easy way to describe it as well. Um, we have namespaces reserved now. I think this was probably the only reason we've kept the names quiet. Um, we have wharfkit.com, which is live right now. It has the first video of uh, the last meeting. Uh, we have the GitHub link for WharfKit. We have WharfKit on Twitter. We have WharfKit on NPM. So we have a pretty solid distribution pipeline for this stuff. Um, we went with adding kit on the end because of SDKs, software development kits. So while throughout this entire presentation, we've called it Worf, just a singular word, for uniqueness purpose, Worf kit is the short it's eight letters. It is how we are going to try to identify it there. This is still a discussion that's ongoing on our side, and we'll probably want to open this up to everybody else. But maybe we don't even call it just Worf. Maybe it is always referred to as Worf kit. Like that might be a better meaning. It might be a better express expression. And it might help e people find it a lot easier. Ideally, if you search for Worf uh, and then Antelope on Google, because you know if you just search for Worf on Google, you're going to get a bunch of boat docs. Um, but if when we're referring to it as Worf kit, like that might immediately return the proper search results. Worf and Antelope as a search term might will it definitely will return you to the website or the GitHub or something like that immediately. But in terms of actual branding, like in short, I think when we're just talking, we can just say Worf. But maybe for presentation wise, there might be justification at adding kit onto the end. So that way it's more easily found. I don't know. We may be overthinking the need for the word kit at the end, but for domain handling and uh, these types of assets, we have kit on the end of them now. Uh, we have kind of a sample website layout that we've played with. There's probably a choppy animation happening right now on the Google stream. The actual like Figma presentation will have a much more cleaner version. Um, you can see kind of the website that exists right now in WarfKit is similar to this. Um, but we've come up with some ways to present the brand, work this into what would look like a website concept, um, and play with the shapes and the designs and the colors to make something that feels alive and vibrant, like it's welcoming. Uh, yeah. So I mean, this is the brand that we've come up with. Uh, we're super excited about it. I, I know my my tone through the meeting may not be. It's just been a busy day, but uh, it's been a name that honestly we've had for a while now, uh, months and months, if not years. It's just we've never really pulled it out and utilized it like this. So yeah, I'm curious to know what you guys think. Um, what any criticism or ideas might be, how this may be further improved. Uh, you can see on this slide, we played with a little bit of the animation that feels like a rough version of like waves. I, um, OK, I love Wharf. Absolutely love the name. Uh, I did a quick Google search of Wharf Kit. You're absolutely right. It's got like 5.8 million results, which is astronomically small for Google results. Um, one note about all of the copy that's been here is that it's all selling the features or the benefits, uh, and they should instead sell, sell the outcome. So, you know, build better apps with Antelope or whatever. Uh, I love the logo. I would like to see a version uh, that's uh, monocolor, that like you could put on the black tea or a white tea or something and see how how it looks that way as well. I see that you might have one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we didn't include everything just because we didn't want this show to go on forever. That is kind of my fault. Uh, You're in the wrong presentation there. Oh. Uh, which, what am I looking for? Research? Lead me, Max. Uh, <laughs> I send you the link. OK. Do you send it in Slack? 
that you did. No. Nope. Can we still do a bunch of Klingon memes? Uh, yeah. I'll send it in Slack so you can there you it there. I, I think that will be impossible to stop. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like, I like the logo too. It's great. I love the color. Uh, you can see. Yeah, I like that Klingon animation, animation there. Right? <laughs> nice. I like the uh, the animation that you had there with the waves. Very nice. Max, I don't see a message from. Oh, it's in the Wharf channel, isn't it? Got it. There we go. I'm assuming that's popping up in the right window. Uh, we do have more. This is what I think the PDF is going to represent. Um, this oh, would be the it. black and white, or like the monochrome versions of them all. Excellent. Looks fantastic. So sorry to derail going and hunting for that. Uh, but yeah, we totally agree that like the logo actually works pretty damn well just in black and white as well. Yeah, um, it really does. So yeah, did you, I mean, I kind of interrupted you going on a Easter egg hunt for the black and white version, but. No, no, that was the end. I just okay. wanted to see a, a mono version of it because uh, I know how impactful these single color logos can be. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to do like print on something with just straight exactly. up vector. Yeah. 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 And like the small, you can, you can already see it in that when you were browsing through it. Like if you go smaller, the only one that's really legible is, um, is the mono. The yeah. colors get lost in the smaller ones. Yeah. Exactly. Like the green down at the bottom and the whites right yeah. there. But like it really pops when it's small like this. Yeah. Yeah. It also takes on a little bit more of that like almost 8-bit vibe, except in an isometric perspective. It's 8-bit. It's got this cool like database kind of mm -hmm. uh, form to it. It's nice. It's awesome to hear. Uh, any other thoughts, feedback, uh, questions? I know we're not getting like super technical in anything at this point. And this is mostly just the look itself. Um, it's really half the battle, though. Branding is, is like 90% of everything, right? Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And uh, on GitHub, on a, you can actually see the work. We haven't been sharing a lot of the work that's been going on, but on the uh all the repositories right now live in this work kit organization um you can see i think there's two of them that are public right now one of them being the website that is living on warfkit.com right now it's very simple uh it's currently a svelte kit application that we're working on we've been working on it for a couple days now it's not super fancy but right now our goal is to be a place to publish these meetings on so that way if you need to catch up with them you don't have to go hunting through telegram you can just go to this website, and then maybe we can get other people interested in this process as well, and this evolution of the next kind of set of tooling for this stuff. And honestly, I'm really hopeful that the the direction this specific SDK has gone down for got gone down on for JavaScript that maybe we can replicate this for other purposes and languages and projects in that. If we're going to do an Unreal SDK or a Unity SDK or, or maybe like a mobile app SDK, that they can follow the same pattern, should this pattern prove successful, to create really unique uh, ways to deliver these types of messages and these types of educational resources to developers in those spaces. Um, Worf is going to live in the JavaScript context what lives in Swift or what lives in Kotlin or uh, C Sharp for Unity. Like, there's space for kind of sister brands almost. Um, in the same way that Leap, being the C++ implementation, might have a sibling someday that's written in Rust or Golang or something. And those won't be called Leap. They'll have their own names. So this feels like a good trajectory for the ecosystem to start heading down. And this is kind of the first 
test on the SDK side of going down this path. Sounds fantastic. I am extremely enthused about this. We are too. And I'm hoping that, like I said, with the stuff that's on GitHub, that we're going to be able to start engaging people and getting people to use early versions. Uh, we have the code golf that has been going on. Now that the brand is public, we can start linking the actual code to the code golf stuff. Um, Again, just out of an abundance of caution while we were getting domains and socials and all that sort of stuff reserved, we really didn't want to spill the beans on the word just for whatever reason. Um, I know we haven't run into that problem yet within the ecosystem, but it's going to happen. So might as well be cautious. When do you plan to do the cutover of like packages? Like when can we start importing, you know, worth kit slash whatever? Uh, there might be some early access stuff still yet this year. Um, the other repo that's public right now is the session kit. And that's the one that I've kind of been working on for a couple weeks now. Uh, the, a lot of the work is in the branches right now and we're still iterating heavily, but you can see that it is currently uh, a plug and play system of being able to sign transactions um both in a browser and in a uh server side context um i probably wouldn't recommend using them yet just because like right now one of the pull requests changes the system over from manually specifying hooks to specifying plugins um so like the whole construction method of these uh transaction or these sessions um, has, is changing pretty rapidly. So, I mean, you're willing, you're welcome to start using it whenever you want. It's not distributed, uh, but things are going to be changing. But that sort of feedback from actually using it would be incredibly important. So maybe by end of year, we'll have like a 0.1 release and everything's subject to change and start using it in small applications or applications that you're willing to uh, try to keep pace and provide feedback to how it actually works. Um, the session kit, I mean, I we kind of dove into this before, but it is kind of a, it's the UAL replacement. It doesn't have any interface yet, but it has the transact method and will replace what we know as UAL today. And it will provide uh, server side applications, the ability to perform transactions, which is, it's gonna be a paradigm shift in terms of how we sign transactions, basically. We're trying to make it a lot more simple. The other two repositories that aren't public yet, mainly because there's not much in them yet, um, which we could make public here soon, is the account kit and the contract kit. But I think the session kit probably has the most meat to it right now. Um, but the other two will be, will probably open, or will probably flip the flag to make them public soon, even if there's not much. Sounds good. I was thinking more about the USAO core library um, just being under a different name. Ah, got it. Yeah, that is definitely something that I think the current, we haven't committed to anything yet, but the current idea is, is that we're going to move that. USAO core is going to move under Wharf kit most likely, and we'll probably just call it Antelope. So it'll be like wharf kit slash antelope to be able to get to all of those core components. And then in the future, if there is another protocol that wharf supports, you know, if maybe that's a direction we go, or if there's some variation of antelope, we can then add another package into wharf kit and call it whatever that's called. Well, that is quite possible since we have the whole uh, multi EVMs coming out across yep. different chains. Yeah. So there could be a wharf kit slash EVM package or Ethereum or whatever we want to call that part of it. And then it could just live within this framework and you could use both. That would be a big project. That's out of scope. <laughs> cool. 
Yeah, just uh, to reiterate, Aaron looks great, man. Thanks. Impressive. Credit goes to the team. Yeah. So it, it's big collaborative effort. Um, we're super happy how it turned out, and we're super excited that we get to make Star Trek jokes. <laughs> I've already started looking up phrases in Cleo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had, there's been some jokes about like uh, birds of prey and then posting blank screenshots and being like, here's one now. Um, but they have like a ridiculous amount of just very strange sayings like your mother has a smooth forehead or like <laughs> there's a lot of lore in there. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I mean, and they're just, yeah. Yep, yep. Don't need to dive too deep into that. But yeah, if you have yeah, feedback, recorded calls. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, if you have feedback, like we're this, the brand isn't done by any means. This is just the first presentation of the name, the logo, the words. There may be iteration moving forward on all of this. So we're happy to take feedback. Um, you all know how to reach me. The slide in here now also has the email on how to reach me. So this will be on the YouTube recording of this. Um, this is going to be a process going forward. And here's revision one, just like we had revision one of the architecture. This is very much a blue sky project. We don't know exactly where we're going. It's just this wide open space. Um, we have a really good idea on the end result, but the journey is going to be, I'm sure, a little weedy. <laughs> yeah. And just to jump in for a moment, um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Mara. I'm the marketer at Gray Mass. Um, Nathan, I wanted to thank you for your feedback on us not focusing enough on the outcome in our messaging, saying that this can really help you build great apps. Um, you're totally right. That was just a blind spot. So I'm looking forward to fixing that in the messaging and making it clear. Um, and yeah, looking forward to making this brand as great as we possibly can. Well said. Yeah. I thought the same thing when Nathan was talking about that. And we have that opportunity on the website and through social and through the writing and the documentation to really be able to help deliver that message. I think that um, we have the benefit of having quite a large community already. Um, so we can definitely lean on them to see how this stuff feels to them, A-B test uh, yeah. live and public. Yeah. And the reality is, is I, like I said earlier, like that's going to be the 1%, hopefully, of who uses this is the people who we have today. And right. the intuition and the feedback and the experience of those developers is really going to influence how we shape this for the next 99% of people that are going to experience and build in this ecosystem. That, that was something that I also wanted to touch on. I came in, uh, I was a little late, but I came in right as uh, you were discussing the different target audiences. Um, so there was developers who don't know blockchain, uh, developers who don't know Antelope, and then experienced developers within the ecosystem. Uh, that's a large target audience. What's the, what's the primary target there? New developers, for sure. Um... That don't know blockchain or don't know Antelope? That don't know Antelope, I would say, but we do. We can target mainly people who would be coming from other parts of the blockchain ecosystem while also making sure that it's still welcoming and not too confusing for developers who are coming in saying, I've never used blockchain before. Right. That's excellent. There, there is a benefit. So I'm personally, I'm on the fence about that uh, just for other reasons, but. Um, there's a big benefit to having pre-qualified people who already are in blockchain because uh, you know there's a lot of work taken up um, but there is something to be said about people coming in and having antelope or whatever whichever chain it might be from antelope as their first blockchain because generally developers get very emotionally tied to the first framework or blockchain or language that they they use uh, so that's also a very valid target. For sure. And yeah, I think we could definitely target web developers who are new to blockchain entirely as our main audience. Um, I believe the only concern was that that puts the onus on us to describe a lot of basic blockchain. principles. Yeah. yeah. 
but I don't know. We'll look into it. There may be ways to easily send them off the website to learn the basics and be like, put little question mark bubbles next to a lot of words where they might be like, what is that? And we'll say, okay, here's a great explanation over here. Go learn that, come back. Um, there's, there's this is kind of the same things that we're struggling with as well. Yeah. If only we could just download the information to their minds. Be like, all right, you get it now. Move on. I don't come through. Yeah. Yeah. I think we, this isn't in the slide, but one thing we're not addressing is people who are new to development in general. I think that's kind of a given. You need some sort of development experience before you dive into blockchain. It's, it's similar to all the game developers that are like, I'm going to learn to program by building a video game. It's like, well, you should learn to program before you try to make a video game because it's hard, just like developing on the blockchain. Yeah. Awesome. I guess um, from the gray mass side, for anybody that's here, did I miss anything? Did I leave anything out? Did you have any other thoughts that you wanted to convey about the brand, the design, the marketing, anything like that? I think you nailed it. Awesome. Yeah, good job. Thanks. Max is the one responsible for all the pretties. <laughs> we'll have to uh, share some of the other stuff that came out of this, at least design-wise at some point, just because there were some fun other concepts. We had one with a little crane. That Reverse. was kind of fun. The little, little design bloopers? Yep. Yeah. The whole sprawling imagination of different concepts before we ultimately landed on something that just kind of resonated with us. Like there's so many different ways you can look at this logo and kind of interpret it that we think at least for everybody, one of them will hit them. Like even if it's just a W, like cool. Oh, it's it's a knock out of the park. I love this. Excellent aesthetic, great environment, great feel to it. Hits that web three, like you mentioned which I also am a love-hate relationship with. Yeah. Uh, but it, it very much hits a lot of the checkboxes. And it doesn't lean too heavily on it. Like, you really got to kind of, you got to stretch just a little if bit. you wouldn't have said it, I would have never known. Yeah. yeah. It's probably just because our team's been staring at this for, like, weeks now. And we're like, hey, look, it's a W, and it's a 3, and it's Web 3. Oh, my God. No, it's Web 3. <laughs> the whole emotional roller coaster following that. Yep, plus one. Like it. Good. Awesome. We'll probably start sharing this stuff publicly at this point. Like maybe we'll, once this meeting recording is up, we can take the opportunity to put it on the website and then maybe share it in like the Antelope Developers channel and be like, if you guys want to keep up, this is where you can keep up now. We'll look for feedback. We'll get um, criticism or anything like that from that side of the community that can't make these calls. Um, as, yeah. I'm excited to see where this goes. This is kind of the opening of the floodgates from our side as we start releasing the website, publishing or like open sourcing the repos, start having more public discussions now that we can actually call it something. We don't have to call it the wallet SDK or the web client SDKs anymore. Try to figure out what that means. Awesome. Well, if there are no other further questions or anything like that, I think we can potentially end a little bit early, or at the very least, end of the recording. Cool. Well, I, <laughs> I will stop the recording here. Uh, thank you all for watching and for participating.